Okay, folks, we've got an answer why the chicken crossed the road. Welcome back to the Renewed Homestead, everybody. I'm Ben. I'm Denise. And why did the chicken cross the road? Okay, Mitchell, why would the chicken cross the road? Well, that's because his house moved up the road. So why did we do that? You know, we've had that chicken coop down by the house and that's fine, that's zone one. You know, we didn't know exactly where we wanted it. We've got so many different projects going on, but we decided, you know, it's time to move it. Partly, one, because, there go our guineas, uh, partly because they've kind of beaten down that area and it needs to recover, but we moved them up to our food forest and we've got some overgrown area between the old uh, pear trees and that's where we've got, got the uh, fencing around them and we're keeping them in there, but this way the chickens can, you know, dig through, dig up that grass, fertilize it because we also have some new trees that we're going to be putting in. I know you, you see us planting more and more trees and bushes and things like that, but as they say, when's the best time to plant a tree? Five years ago. So some of the other projects were just kind of pushing back a day or so, so we can get some more trees in because, you know, a couple years from now, we'll be harvesting we'll, fruit. We'll be grateful for the trees. Absolutely. Yeah, and we're talking about, um, and we showed you in a prior video, and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you some footage here of where we're doing the food forest. And we have an orchard down at the front part of our property. That's where you saw us planting trees this spring. So that'll be one orchard. The orchard up, uh, or excuse me, the, the food forest, which is going to contain a lot of fruit trees, which will have an orchard as well, is going to go up to the shop. So it's gonna be really easy to drive up through and to uh, you know gather our food our fruit and the whole purpose of a food forest is to set it so that nature can start to take over and it can start to produce for you without a whole lot of attention um, as you know with summer gardens with fall gardens there's a lot of tending and and we absolutely love gardening but with a food forest there's not as much tending down the road now when you first start there's going to be a lot of preparation now we have to get the grass is down we're going to have to bring a whole bunch of compost in now we are doing a lot of compost and we will have enough for our uh, spring and summer garden unfortunately we will have to bring in some compost just because uh, of the uh, size of the food forest we just don't have enough but we were sitting there talking about bringing in the compost and then putting the cardboard down and then of course putting mulch on top of that and I looked at Ben and I said, why are we not utilizing the chickens? Let's utilize, as Jill Salatin says, the chickenness of the chicken. Let them scratch up some of that grass, let them fertilize the area. And then in a couple of months, we can come through on that side and we can get the compost down, we can get the cardboard down, we can get the mulch down. Um, and then we can really start to plant some of those um, other species that we're going to put in the food forest this spring. And then of course, because it's fall, we're starting to plant some of those uh, trees to give them a chance to uh, get their roots established um, over the winter. And then um, obviously we're planting shrubs right now and other plants that need to cold stratify. So we'll utilize winter to do that. So this is, the, this is really the beginning of our food forest. And we're gonna let the chickens kind of start that process for us. Then in a couple of months, we'll pull them out. We'll put them in a different section that we want them to work. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, let them do some of the work for us, really. Yeah. And, you know, and, and talking about the, uh, the shrubs, you know, check out Denise's video she just put out about the Siberian pea shrub. Pretty, pretty interesting information. But you know what else is really cool? We're not going like this. It's getting cold at night, so the bugs aren't all over us. And in fact, yes, it's it's getting chilly. But let me turn you just a little bit here. You can see the shop down below us, and you can see we've already got a couple of trees, and that's where you saw us planting our blueberries and the honeyberry. Honeyberry. I can never remember honeyberry. 
I will once I get a taste of them, I'm sure. But anyway, that's that's where we need all that cardboard and the mulch and things like that. So that's all running behind us and behind you. And, and what are we doing every few trees? What are we doing? We're planting a nitrogen fixer and yep. we're also going to plant some other support species. So you're definitely going to want to come along in future videos as we talk about why we're planting what we are, um, the, the placement of it. But it's really important, you know, about every third tree or so to get a nitrogen fixer in place. Because as we talked about in the Siberian pea shrub video, there's a lot of nitrogen in the air, but most plants cannot take it from the air like they do oxygen. So they need those nitrogen fixers that can take that from the air, put that down into the soil, and then the other plants benefit from it. That's why when you find areas that have been devastated or that are unhealthy, what are the first things you see coming up? Those are nitrogen fixers because they're there to really heal the soil and to help uh, just, just bring nutrients back to it. So your your third tree you're looking at like a black locust or a what are the other trees? Well, there's black locust, there's honey locust. I mean, there are so many different yeah. um, varieties yeah. of uh, uh, nitrogen fixing trees. But you don't just need to do trees too. Well, you right. can do That's, the shrubs. That yeah. was going to be my point is that every third tree you want a nitrogen fixing tree that you can coppice down and and keep it keep its size reasonable. But then in between you have the Siberian pea shrub and the uh, the comfrey. Yes. We've got comfrey, we plant comfrey around it, or the base of every tree we put in, so immediately it's got that nitrogen fixer right right on tap. Well, and that's more of a bioaccumulator that's going to bring up those nutrients, and that's why you can chop and drop that comfrey and get it down yeah. um, at that, you know, chop and drop and put that, and, and that all those nutrients are going to go back down into that tree as well. So right. the comfrey's more of that bioaccumulator that we really want. Yeah. So, but yeah, so that's why every third tree, um, you want some kind of nitrogen fixer. And I will go ahead and link an article in the comments that will show you some common nitrogen fixers. There are a lot. Now, some you have to be careful of. Uh, they can get out of control because they're there to do a job, right? Yep. But like here in Western North Carolina, they came in and planted kudzu and it's really causing a lot of issues. They planted the multiflora rose. It's really causing a lot of issues. They planted that Chinese silver grass that are causing a lot of issues. So it's okay to plant those nitrogen fixers. You just want to make sure um, that if you're planting one that is known to be extremely invasive, uh, which we're, we're gonna be really careful of that, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you can stay on top of it. And if you can't find one that's maybe not quite so invasive, just cause you, you wanna try to focus on native plants as, as often as you can. Yeah. And from the videos, it probably seems like we're just, it's like, oh yeah, let's plant this, let's plant this, let's plant this, which, Yes, I mean that's my my theory. I like you know if I, if I can stick a seed in the ground, I do. I mean, like the little tummy toe ch cherry tomatoes. You know, I was eat, eating those and spitting the seeds out along the creek bed because you know in the spring they're going to come up. Yeah. But I, I have to tamper him and say no, 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 honey, let's put this here first. <laughs> she likes organization. I well, thrive in a, food, in a food forest that wasn't fully organized. Well, just, right, right, yeah. but I thrive on chaos. You, that's that's true. I, I'm, but, I'm the organizer, absolutely. But we do do our research before we buy seeds and things like that. We'll look and see what people are saying. This is invasive. You'll never get rid of it. Uh, the Jerusalem artichoke, that's one thing I've read about. Really curious to try it, but we planted it in an area where it can't escape because what we understand from Zach over at uh, an American homestead, he said, once it's in the ground, you will not get rid of it. And I could see from the, what we planted in the pots and I pulled out, there are some real tiny, tiny little bulbs. And if those take off, I mean, you know, one gallon pot is probably going to turn into 50 plants next year. So, which is great, right? From a from a food security standpoint, you know, he said you will never go hungry if you've got Jeruz Jerusalem artichoke and a spa and we've got asparagus yeah, we've too. Got asparagus so. growing and so many other things. But we do do our research. We're not just oh hey, we're at uh, Walmart or Lowe's or one of the other places. There's a plant. There's a plant. There's a plant. Well, I would do you that. Would do that. I would do that. <laughs> I would totally do that. That's why we needed acreage. So we can have pretty down here and well we're, we're creating we're planting trees up in the pasture as well so we're, yes. we're creating kind of like a silvo pasture so uh eventually we'll get to parts of the forest that we're going to create silvo pasture and kind of thin some things out because it desperately needs to be thinned yeah, it's, out it's overgrown it's it's choking itself out yes but an easier way to kind of plant silvo pasture as well is to if you've got a pasture that's bare 
plant some trees yep. and then uh, you know over a few years then the animals will have forage the animals will have uh, for Nut, shade and nuts and fruits and nuts and fruits and all that yeah so that's why we we planted the American chestnuts up in the pasture uh, so that way we could kind of create a silver pasture and yes you can see the as my as one of my best friends calls them are feathered little idiots <laughs> so, they're crazy but They've done a really amazing job they of getting have. rid of the bugs. The so. only ticks we found this year, no, okay, we found, I think, two on the dogs and two on me. But last year, oh. you know, by this time last year, the dogs had been covered and they had, Well, when it you was found those six, too, Key had had her babies. Yeah. So the, the female adult, one of the first uh, guineas that we got, Key, she had had her baby. So the only one that was really out was William. Right. And the other ones that we have here were still babies. So we were they were in the barn so we could make sure that they knew where home was. Yeah. So we really didn't have a lot of guineas that were actually out foraging at the time that we found those ticks. But yeah. and I, yes, and, I, and I don't know if you guys know the story. You're laughing about William. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to tell yeah. this story? <laughs> well, 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 Permapastures Farms, William, uh, he hates guineas. We told him we were getting guineas. He's like, don't. They're so stupid. It's like, it's like and, I can't and stand he's not them. Wrong. I, I, he's and not you wrong. can hear them. I mean, that's. I mean, look, look at these guys. They're they're goofy looking. I like them. Yes, but we like we, we have we have found them to be very entertaining and very useful. It's great watching them go along, just line up and just eat, eat, eat bugs. But anyway, so the first male we got just jokingly said, "Well, because William hates them so much, we got to name William," and it stuck. So, <laughs> He's so William. So, so we we have William the uh, the guinea guinea. Yeah. guinea. William guinea. and Key were our first, and then yeah. we've got our our other pack of. Cruise, and then we've got all the babies that William and G had. I, I do have to warn you, if you get guineas, they are prolific. They will lay eggs, and at least in our estimation, 95% of those eggs hatch. Yeah. So that's why we'll, we've been, you know, we've sold a few, and next year we'll definitely sell more. Yeah. But they are prolific, and I think that's because they don't survive long in the wild. I did read they can survive up to 17 years. I said 18, but yeah. Yeah, that's... but uh, that doesn't happen very often because they, you know, they're target for for predators well they're, they're not they're not very smart no and they roost in trees and they don't have good night vision and so around here at least the owls will pick them off so we we do corral them at night she entices she's the bird lady she entices <laughs> them in with food gets them into their cages in the in the barn so they're safe and they get that, fed at night so they go into the barn and they yeah. in the summer they're okay to roost because there's leaves on the trees that can right. hide them but the problem is when you hit fall and winter and those leaves come off the other predators like owls come in and swoop and grab Gone. them. And the issue with guineas is they roost at the same spot every single night. So that owl knows there's a smorgasbord there. So the next night he's going to come back and come back and come back. So. Exactly. It's like a drive through, drive drive through, through. diner. You know? It really is. But, yeah. So. But we were talking about trees. I'll just show you real quick here. Sitting in the trailer. We have some new trees. And we will talk about that. Probably in the next video because there's some special ones probably, we probably ordered. Probably a couple videos to come. Yeah, a couple. We've, anyway, we've got some other videos coming out that are. You special. will see us plant these trees, <laughs> and we will tell you the story behind why we got these trees. But they're here. They're ready to go in the ground. It's not going to happen tonight. Sun setting. It's time to get the crazy birds up. But I think that's what we wanted to cover, right? Yeah. So Chicken so poop. so really, if you have animals, right? And this is the whole point of perma permaculture, but also just regenerative agriculture, right? Use what you have. If you have chickens and you have an area that needs to be cleared, put them in there. Um, right now, we don't want the chickens in the garden because we have fall crops in there. We have spinaches, kales, lettuces. Um, your radishes are going crazy. Yeah. We, so, we, don't, we don't want the chickens in yeah, there. We don't yeah. want them in yet. But I see once them in those, there now. Yeah. Oh, did one get in there? Yes. They're, and they like to scratch out the seeds. So. All right. So yeah, we'll, anyway. We'll go take... No, no. He's not in. He's on the outside. She's in. Okay, well, we'll go take care of anyway. her. I must have left the gate partially open. But after the fall crops are done, we're going to let the chickens in there because they will go through and fertilize and, you know, get up some of the, possibly some of the weeds that want to grow over winter. So that's why you utilize what you have, like the sheep, right? We're utilizing the sheep. Um, not only are we going to use them for meat, but we're also using them to help heal our pasture. So that's why they get moved. So it's all about using what you have. Use the chickens. You know, if you've got guineas, use guineas. Uh, you can even eat guinea eggs. Utilize ruminant animals that you have to heal your land. It's all about utilizing resources on your homestead 
to help not only give the animals a better life while uh, they are under your care, um, but it's also about healing your land and making it produce more for you, which is which is really what we want, right? We want that, that the great harvest. Right. Well, talk dollar and cents too. I mean, if they're fertilizing, I don't have to run down to the store and buy a bag of fertilizer, which might be going up in price too because of the fuel shortages, but we don't need yeah. to discuss that right now. But it's less chemicals we have to bring in. I mean, they're just doing their thing, so. Yeah. Um, but utilize what you have. Yep. And if you have any questions, let us know. Like I said, there's a lot that we are still learning, but uh, we've learned a lot, I'd say, over the last year. We, we yeah. really have. It's been it's been a learning experience. It's been it, wonderful, it, it, but a lot, it, a lot of hard work. It has, and, and we'll, uh, we'll probably do another video. We went to a, a, a homesteader's Kind of, kind, of a, kind of a prepper type of yes. uh, get together over in Tennessee over the weekend, and it was really interesting. And uh, we want to share some thoughts on that, but we'll we'll bring that to you another time. Yeah. So, why did the chicken cross the road? Well, because his house moved across the road, and home is where the roost is. So, yeah. I think we're we're good with that. Yep. So, All right. Again, let us know if you have any questions. Let please. us know how you're using the animals on your homestead. Yeah. Love yeah, to hear maybe, about that. Yeah, there might be some things that we can learn together on. Please, yeah, because uh, clearly we don't know everything, but if you've found a way that really works that's helped you or your garden grow or whatever it is, yeah, share, please. Please help us help us help you guys. Well, yeah. and also uh, others in the comments as well. It's, yeah. about, it's part of that community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, all right, well, that'll about do it for us. Please make sure you subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. We are so close to having 500 subscribers, so please share us. Um, I guess that's it from the uh, from the renewed homestead. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. We'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye bye. We appreciate you. Yes, bye. we do. Bye.